3D printing is awesome. However, one thing that's not so much fun is when you find out that the object that you 3D printed, that your supports that you used for it can't be easily removed. In this case, this is something that I 3D printed overnight and all of these supports are basically welded directly to this 3D print. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a very easy and quick test that you can run on your 3D printer to optimize your support settings. And yeah, this is not budging. No wonder why people have so many issues working with organic or tree supports. This was the default settings that came in the slicer and these are not coming off without a lot of effort. This should be so much easier to pull off. If you weren't already aware, a few months ago, I did a video similar to this covering the actual support settings that I typically use for working with my organic or tree-like supports, as well as using the make overhang printable functionality, which I absolutely love, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked here and down below. But for this, I need a test file that we can run to find the most optimal support setting. Now I tried looking online for a bunch of different file options and nothing really caught my eye. However, I did see this file by faulty data, which I believe is a remix from somebody else's file, which is again is a remix of someone else's file. Uh, so I wanna try and take this concept here and improve upon it. So I'm gonna use my iPad and quickly design one in Shaper 3D. And the whole idea of a file that I'm looking for is that it needs to have multiple different tests within one file that I can run. So I need it to have obviously an overhang so that we can have that supported, but I also wanna make sure that it's not just a big flat surface. I also wanna make sure that we have something that we can test with more narrow options where you have maybe sharp edges that you need to really heavily support and see how well those supports can be removed. And then after a few minutes of modeling, I ended up with a file that I'm pretty happy with that should be relatively quick for us to print and also has all of those different tests that we can run within one file. I also went through the process of adding values along the top. So as we're printing these, we can make sure that those correspond to the values that we're gonna be plugging into our slicer to more easily keep track of all these tests. And obviously there's gonna be a blank option as well. So if you wanted to run your own variation of these tests with your own settings, you can do that as well. Now, the beauty of this test file that I created is that you're not gonna be limited to just using organic or tree supports. You can also use this for testing your grid supports as well within any of the slicers that you wanna work with. So I'm gonna be focusing on Orca Slicer, but this is also applicable to Prusa Slicer or Bamboo Studio or Cura or even Simplify 3D. And the setting that I'm talking about should really be universally applicable to any of these slicers. So again, you're gonna open up your slicer of choice. Again, I'm working with Orca Slicer and you're gonna make your way over to the support tab, you're going to make sure that you're enabling supports. And then depending on the support type that you want to work with, in this case, I'm going to be working with tree supports. I'm going to leave that as auto. You have an option of choosing the type of supports that you want to work with, the tree slim, strong, uh, hybrid, or organic. And then you can set your threshold angle, which I'm going to leave at 30 for now. And then I can basically leave this remove small overhang selected. And then what we're going to want to make sure that we're doing is for each of these tests for your files, we're going to adjust just the top Z distance. So in that previous video, I mentioned my default that I pretty much always work with now is 0.28, but I don't know if that's actually the best option for the filament that I'm working with. So here I have a build plate set up for 0.2, 0.22, 0.26, 0.28, 0.3, et cetera. I've also got a larger and a smaller option that I'm gonna be printing simultaneously at the same time, just for ease of use purposes. You don't have to print both of these. You can print one or the other if you'd like. So for this test, I'm gonna make sure that the top Z distance is set to 0.2, and then I can now slice this and then we can get this exported and off and printing. And I'm gonna repeat this process for all of the other files. And again, the beauty of this file is you can actually test this with not only the organic and tree supports, but also your grid supports. So if you're interested in seeing how not only the uh, top Z distance affecting it, but also the bottom Z distance, you can modify those values as well with the overhang in the top connecting part for those overhangs on some of these print files. And then, once we've got those all sliced, we can actually get them up and printing. And to do that, I'm gonna be running all these tests over a series of different Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printers, which just so happens Elegoo is the sponsor of today's video. If you're interested in affordable, fast 3D printers, Elegoo offers some great options for you, ranging from small to mid-sized to large 3D printers. And they also have a variety of different filaments available to meet basically all of your needs. And the Elegoo Day promotion is still running through October 20th. So if you haven't already entered into that contest, I highly recommend checking it out where you can get a chance to win some of their amazing 3D printers, including their new Core XY printer 
that I am so excited to show you guys more of very soon. A big thank you to Elegoo again for sponsoring today's video. I am seriously so happy that I decided to add those values on top of the prints. This makes keeping these organized so much easier and then again, validating the test results. I'll be making sure to share these files down below on a variety of different sites. So if you wanna download them and print them for yourself, you can go ahead and do that. And I'll probably add a few more value options on there if you wanted to further increase your testing. Also the dual prints, the smaller and the larger took, I believe just under one hour to print for each of them. And then if you wanted to individually print them, the smaller one takes about 15 minutes to print. And then the larger one takes about 45 minutes to print. All right, let's start these off with the 0 0.20 with the smaller print here. <laughs> As expected, the smaller, I mean, that that removed pretty, pretty cleanly and easily here from this test. That's why I printed a smaller and larger just to see how this would all handle. Yeah, that sticks pretty good, but still looked and uh, removed pretty cleanly there. So this is nice uh, here. We'll be able to do a comparison and see which one we think at the end removed the best. Man, these are all coming off really nice and easily. Well, this wasn't exactly the clear and concise results that I was expecting to see while running this test because more or less all of the supports came off with varying degree of the same amount of pressure. One wasn't really necessarily harder to remove than any of the others. So I wanted to take a quicker look at the actual results of where the supports connected to the print and see if there's any varying details in those results. And again, there's not a whole lot of difference between the prints with the connection to the upper parts of those printed test files. But what I really think this call comes down to is why this test is kind of important for you to be able to run is that it's gonna vary wildly based on the filament that you're working with as I managed to tangle this up. This is the Elegoo, uh, just the regular basic PLA. This is like a matte black PLA. And it might explain why that I'm not seeing the exact same results when printing with their rapid green filament here, which again was more or less fused directly to the print. So I'm gonna reprint this whole entire test over again using this same green filament. All right, so here's the point two. These little ones always remove really easily here. Yep, here we go. This is it. It's the it's the filament. It's oh my gosh, these are again, it's like welded on there. Those are so difficult to break free. Here's the bigger. Yeah, those little narrow ones are fairly easy to get off. There we go, there's that. There we go, that was a little easier. Really clean looking though. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's all about the filament. Oh my goodness. 2-2, two, two. feels like it's just as difficult to remove. I'm gonna need some tweezers or needle nose. I can't get that off, I can't get that off at all. Holy cow, I can't believe how much of a massive difference there is between this green filament and the same support settings and the black same prints. 2.4 is maybe, a, yeah, that's definitely, it's getting easier. Definitely getting easier as we're going here. All right, here's the typical 2.8. Yeah, these are significantly, significantly easier to take off. That is so much easier to take off. 0.3 is, yeah, those are still on there pretty good. Like it's still it's still attached, but it's it's again uh, a, a good bit easier than what we saw with the others. I think it also has to do with the angle of how these are attaching. And again, just the difference between the filaments is wild to see with these. So I think this was a much better accurate representation of how this should actually work. So the 2.0, I could not get those off with my bare hands. The 2.2 was a bit more of a struggle and you'll see here where the underside is a lot more roughed up. Similar to that with the 2.4, anything like a 2.6, or a, a 0.26, a 0.28, or even the three seems to have worked the best in terms of ease of getting it off and then the quality of what I'm seeing underneath 
when it came to actually support these. So maybe I could even go further than this with a 0.32 or 0.34 to really find out where the fall off is. So really, I think the best way for me to test this is again to take one of my settings here. I'm gonna go with the 0.28 again and rerun that alien print in both the black filament as well as the green filament and test out removing the supports. All right, so here are both of the printed alien files here from Printed Obsession and let's test out. <laughs> As expected with the black filament, these should just pop right off without a whole lot of fuss. I think the biggest challenge that you might run into with some of these is how interconnected some of the supports can be when it comes to actually removing these. But the actual contact points here are really not, yeah, I can just really pull these apart and get this removed as I'm slinging filament uh, supports all over the place here. Nice, yeah, removed all of those by hand. But not sure if I'm gonna be able to do the same thing with this green one, but we'll test it out. All right, and again, let's try the, the green one here. Yeah, this is already, already proving to be easier. This is s still sticking. I probably could have gone with the, the 0.3 and gotten the same results and just had an easier time removing these supports. While I do this, one other tip that you can do is reduce. If you're still having issues, like I'm struggling a bit here with this one in green, you can actually reduce the number of walls that your supports print and it'll make those thinner and easier to remove as well. But it also makes them weaker. So it depends on what you're printing. If you're printing something really large, you might wanna consider the combination of the two between the contact as well as the actual thickness of your supports. Yeah, that ended up being a lot more difficult than it should have been. This basically is exactly what I was calling out in the very beginning of the video. Even though I adjusted these settings for the supports here, it was still too tight at the 0.28 for that interface uh, for the supports to the actual print. And I ended up breaking part of this print here. You'll see the arm is broken. And then one of the other bits here, I ended up breaking off while trying to remove the prints. Well, hopefully the third time is the charm because I reprinted this overnight using the 0.34 support contact setting. So these should hopefully be a good All bit right, easier to go. remove. Let's see. Yeah, yeah that's, that's already this is, yeah, these are coming off a whole heck of a lot easier than the others. It's all about just playing with those settings, I think, to find, oh my gosh, yeah, this is drastically, drastically easier to remove. So it's just a matter of fine tuning those settings for the filament that you're working. I can't believe how much easier this is. I just needed to bump that up a good bit for the contact distance. And yeah, that that is now just, popping right off all of these contact points. That really was so much easier to remove compared to the previous attempt. And it really goes to show that there is a difference between the contact settings, depending on the filaments that you're working with. And unfortunately, this wasn't 100% perfect. I did have a partial fail here where the leg just looks like it broke free or just didn't print properly during this print attempt. But I was really happy to see with how much easier those supports were to remove using that 0.34 setting. And again, if you're interested in running these tests for yourself, I'll have these linked down below for you to try out. And I'm gonna increase the number of options that are available with the listings on top of them as well. Also, if you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, I have those available on my Patreon, which I want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos here on the channel. And if you have any other support setting tips or suggestions, let me know in the comments down below that I can check out. I'm still honestly kind of shocked at how much of a difference this played when printing the exact same model using the same supports, but just the settings slightly different between them based on the filaments and their needs. Hey, thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll see you next time.